1967. When you soldier, you take the good with the bad. And Fort Henry here in Kingston could be worse. The fort's in a good spot, defending Kingston against attack from land and water. People thought it was crazy, building the fort to face inland. But the army figured a main attack would come from there. But when Confederation came, there was no real worry about war. All of us at the fort were on parade to salute Confederation, and what a sight it was. Down in Kingston, they read the proclamation in the marketplace, and the people were wild with excitement. Fort Henry defended Kingston against a southerly attack from Lake Ontario or the St. Lawrence River, and from a northerly attack down the Rideau River. Kingston was founded by the French in 1673. It was called Cataraqui then, as it was when British settlement began in 1784. Most of the new settlers were United Empire loyalists who fled the new Republic of the United States. Kingston was Canada's capital for three years until 1844, signifying its importance as a major naval base, military center, trade port, and a natural communications link between Toronto and Montreal. Although never attacked during the War of 1812, or at any other time, Kingston played a vital role as an embarkation center for men and equipment. might decide to stay in Canada. Nothing much for me over home. But this is a new country and a chap could go a long way here. A lot of the chaps here don't want to go back, especially these with wives. Not much of a life for a woman to live in the fort, but a lot of them are just waiting to get out of the army and settle down around Kingston. Maybe I'll do that, find myself a wife and settle down in Canada. The British soldier garrisoned in the Fort Henry of 1867 never awoke to the sounds of battle. His way of life instead was a constant round of drills, inspections, artillery salutes, and mock battles. All this so he could be alert for combat that never came. For although it bristled with guns, and was probably the finest fortification of its day anywhere in the world, not a stone of Fort Henry was chipped by enemy fire. Britain's Union Jack flew over Kingston and the rest of the country for almost a hundred years after Confederation. For although it was granted independence in 1931, it wasn't until 1965 that Canada replaced the Union Jack with its own distinctive flag bearing the maple leaf. There was no Canadian army in 1867 either, except for a few volunteer units. The bulk of military manpower in Canada consisted of regular British infantry regiments and artillery units. Fort Henry in 1867 ported the Royal Canadian Regiment, men of the Royal Regiment of Artillery, and occasionally Canadian militia. And like any soldier before and after him, the Fort Henry regular was expected to keep his bleak barracks in spotless condition. Another two hours gone. Two hours on, 
four off. Twenty-four hours of it at a time. And if it's not that, it's drill, drill, drill. Sure. It's monotonous. Especially in peacetime when there's nothing happening out there. No doubt about that. Strict military discipline was a way of life for the Fort Henry regular. When he wasn't on sentry duty, he drilled throughout the day. For even in 1867, border troubles between Canada and the United States could have erupted into armed... Continuing drilling exercises, therefore, kept the soldiers fit and alert for battle, for ceremonial parades, too, before the public. And as a consequence, Kingston residents saw a lot of the Royal Canadian Rifle Regiment around the time of Confederation. women and young maidens all took the regiment to their hearts and considered it their very own. It was a unique regiment in the British Army because it was permanently stationed in Canada. Although Fort Henry is located outside of Kingston proper, the public regularly congregated on the grassy slopes, especially children, who found it a perfect setting for playing soldier or just plain old-fashioned hooky. Whether on land or on a sailing boat, Kingston citizens could watch the activity outside the fort's thick walls. They also often took part in social doings inside those walls. Gay dances and receptions in the officers' quarters, tennis on the parade ground, and in winter, tobogganing parties on the fort hill. Gun drill was one commonplace activity, so common in fact that even children often became blasé about it. But the gun symbolized the fort's role as a well-equipped garrison and depot that supplied military needs of other garrisons in Upper Canada. It was the storehouse for gunpowder and other equipment shipped from across the Atlantic and up the St. Lawrence River. Despite the strained relations that could have ignited a war with America, the boom of a 24-pounder on the ramparts still drew very little attention. But there was security in the sound of it and in the presence of the fort. towers, 60 feet high, were built at the ends of the east and west branch ditches, which extend like arms from the main fort. The frame roofs could be quickly removed to reveal a gun, which could swing in any direction. Inside one of the thickest parts of the fort's east wall is the gunpowder magazine. Soldiers in special clothing were trained to work in dim light to avoid explosions caused by sparks and heat. The only light allowed shone faintly from the corridor through a plate of glass. If an enemy had ever tried storming Fort Henry when it was completed in 1836, chances are his forces would have been annihilated. For even if they escaped the fire of 27 guns on the rampart, bullets and shot would come from reverse fire chambers which face the main ditch. The chambers are located in the counterscarp and are reached by a tunnel running under the ditch. Mr. 
laser shot, fired against the wall, could spray the invaders with deadly effectiveness. A stone wall, constructed in a special way, prevented ricochets. Also, the caponier cut off any dead firing angles, thereby providing no safe hiding place. in military language is a casemated redoubt. The main section is a pentagon. The three-sided front has two tiers, the top occupied by the soldiers and the bottom one by stores. The front faces inland towards the north, fully defending the Rideau River entrance and the naval dockyard. The fort's main entrance is on the south side through the advanced battery and the commissariat stores, which defends against a southerly attack by water. Inspection, drill, inspection, drill. It never ends. And everywhere you go, it's on the double. One good thing about this Queen's army is that a chap gets his stew and a good roof over his head. A lot more than most of us would get on the outside. Barrack life may have seemed like a resort hotel to many of the soldiers, who never before slept between white sheets or on mattresses, even though they were filled with straw. in comparative luxury, their personal needs promptly attended to. They had a library and an officer's mess where they often entertained in style, whereas the common soldier's amusements were limited. Although the fort was never tested in battle, there was a scheme to capture it during the ill-fated rebellion of 1837. The attack never came, but many of William Lyon Mackenzie's followers were jailed in the fort. One group of rebels did escape. They were led by John Montgomery, whose Toronto Tavern was a rebel rendezvous. More drill. This time it's the men of the artillery running to man the guns on the ramparts. Even in peacetime, no civilian, man or horse, could enter the fort without being challenged by the sentry. When a new officer moved in, he sometimes brought along his own tub. The roughing it may be fine, but not when you're an officer. When the United States declared war on Britain and attacked Upper Canada in 1812, Kingston and the vital naval dockyard were practically defenseless. There was only a small garrison and two sea batteries on Mississauga Point and Point Frederick. Defenses were hastily erected. Five fortified blockhouses west of Kingston and a blockhouse and telegraph on Point Henry, which defended the eastern approaches. When it was demolished in 1832, the first Fort Henry was a substantial fortification. Oh, 
By this time, the War of 1812 was long over, but this trust and bitterness lingered on. The 1812 war had shown that Kingston needed a safer means of communication with Montreal than the St. Lawrence River, which could be blockaded from the south. In 1826, Lieutenant Colonel John By of the Royal Engineers began supervising the six-year construction of the Rideau Canal, which helped link Montreal and Kingston for easy and safe passage for boats. And the waterway's defense depended on a new Fort Henry, which was to be built by Lieutenant Colonel Ross Wright. The original plan called for demolition of old Fort Henry and a new one built in its place, plus five others and a system of Martello towers to defend both the fort and Kingston. But by the time the old fort was torn down, high costs and improved relations with America altered the original grand plan so that only the present fort and four Martello towers were eventually constructed. The present Fort Henry was completed a year before the rebellion of 1837. The four Martello towers, plus a battery in Kingston, were built by 1846. One on Cedar Island, one in front of City Hall, another on Point Frederick, and a fourth on Murney Point. Whenever a Fort Henry soldier wore his full dress uniform, he was considered to be on parade before the public and had to act accordingly. It didn't matter whether or not he was on duty. Unlike full dress, the undress uniform was worn only during drill or other military exercises. Another routine day has ended in the Fort Henry of 1867. It's a time of rest for most of the fort's defenders, but also a time of vigilance for others. Although never attacked, the fort nevertheless acted as an awesome deterrent to any enemies with ideas of conquering it, the town of Kingston, or the naval dockyard. and I'll be back to regular duty. Get to bed at night for a change, like the other chaps. A nice country, this Canada. Peaceful, room to spread out. Just a place for a chap to settle down. Little shop, maybe, or a good trade. And a wife, yes. That would be nice. visit with us in Kingston, Ontario. Come visit with us at Old Fort Henry and relive our historic past.